The word conspiracy derives from the Latin con, with, together, and sperare, to breathe. The world is abound with mystery. Occasionally, we get to glimpse behind the curtain. So let's take a breath together and do some research. Hi, my name's Alex Whitney, and this is Conspiracy 101. Today, we're looking into Denver Airport. So, Denver Airport. A conspiracy about Denver Airport. Well, where do we go to make sure that a conspiracy is a conspiracy? The conspiracy book. Um, the mammoth book of cover-ups. The 100 most disturbing conspiracies of all time. Uh, it's not in there. Which is usually a hint to the fact that it's a legitimate conspiracy. And something needs to be done. So let's do some research. Um, obviously, as we, as we continue through discovering what truly hides behind Denver Airport, we will be adding to our Canva. And like any good internet research, uh, there we go. Uh, we're going to go incognito mode. And we're going to start with Denver International Airport, which I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. That's, better. That's good enough for me. Denver International Airport. Denver International Airport, locally known as DIA. Dead in arrival is an international airport in the western United States, primarily serving metropolitan Denver, as well as greater front range urban corridor. I'd love to move to the front range urban corridor. Uh, okay, it's got some, it's the largest airport in North America, second largest in the world, uh, longest public use runway in North America. Very interesting. Uh, it's got hotels. Uh, has non-stop service to 215 destinations amongst 23 different airlines throughout North America. It's impressive. It's the third busiest airport in the world. Okay, so straight off the bat, conspiracies are, conspiracies are going to be abound with places like this, aren't they? Just the fact that it is one of the biggest. Um, I guess this is what the airport looks like. Airport diagram. Yes. Yes, that is an airport diagram. I've seen many in my time. So how many runways does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it has six six straight lines. Who knows if they're runways? Um, when did it open? 1995. So it's relatively new, which is really interesting. You don't see many conspiracies about stuff that's new. Okay, well, okay, that's a lie. You do, but... I'm sure you. I'm sure you get the the point <laughs> of that confusion, in that usually, especially when it comes to places, conspiracies, they have to be. They don't, do they? They don't have to be. I was going to say they have to be sort of a few hundred years old in order to garner that kind of attention, but they don't. I'm just talking nonsense. So Denver has tr traditionally been home to one of the busiest airports in the U.S. because of its mid-continent location uh, was ideal for an airline hub. Okay. There used to be an airport there before, which makes sense. Does, does this... I, I've got loads of... Don't worry. This is, We're not just going to be looking at an airport's Wikipedia. I have lots of different... Um, similar, actually... Uh, to previous episodes that we've done where we're looking at news articles the flat earth one we started with news articles and i think this one there's a lot of news articles about it which is kind of makes you wonder whether it's a conspiracy on a conspiracy like they're pointing the direction towards denver international airport when they really don't want you to be looking somewhere else hmm so uh Denver Air Hub, National Transport System, federal government put 500 million, equivalent to 1.1 billion today. So there's a lot of money in this. Um, two years later, Mayor Wellington Webb inherited the mega project, scheduled to open in 93. So obviously got delayed. Two billion over budget. Interesting. Had to deal with blizzards. Right, facilities. I really don't know if this Wikipedia is actually going to talk about for conspiracy theories. Which is hilarious, because if it doesn't, then that's kind of funny. Here we go. Art and aesthetics. This might come up with stuff. 
the Teflon coated fiberglass roof, which is just above my head, of the Denver International Airport resembles the Rocky Mountains. The Jespen, Jes, Jepison? Jepison Terminals International Re internationally recognized peaked roof, designed by Fentress Brad Byrne Architects, resembles snow capped mountains and evokes the early history of Colorado, where Native American teepees were located across the Great Plains. Okay, so it's got a fancy. Fancy steel cable system. Okay, holds it up. Ah, both during construction and after opening, DIA has set aside a portion of its construction and operation budgets for art. That's weird. The corridor from the main terminal and concourse A frequently display temporary art exhibitions. A number of public artworks are present in the underground train that links the main terminal with concourses, including art pieces from the history of Colorado. The airport features a bronze statue of Den Gen Jemba? Denver native Jack Swigert by Loveland, Colorado artist George London in Concourse B. Swigert flew on Apollo 13. Ooh and was elected to House Representatives in 1982, but died of cancer before he was sworn in. That's an interesting fact. The statue is dressed in an A7L pressure suit and is posed holding a gold-plated helmet. Ooh. So that's very interesting. The Conspiracy theorists hate NASA. Doesn't matter what, how, or when. They hate NASA. So the fact that there is a uh, significant money being put into a bronze statue of an Apollo 13 member. Very interesting. Uh, Denver International Airport has four murals, all of which have been the top... Here we go, here we go, here we go. I found it. I found it. Found it. What are we? What are we? What are we? Seven minutes in. Totally nailed it. Denver International Airport has four murals, all of which have been the topic of conspiracy theorists and debate... The murals are ambiguous in meaning, depicting scenes including caged animals, fires, suffering people, and a soldier with a blade and a gas mask. What? <laughs> That's just weird. That's a weird sentence. They have been interpreted in the past by onlookers to represent war, hope, and even the New World Order. What is the New World Order? I hear you... I hear you stray. Mm -hmm. What is it? For Alex, please. New order. New world order is something that's definitely going to have to be a maybe even multi-part <laughs> conspiracy one hundred and one episode. You know, and um, the fact that what we'll probably do as the episodes go along is hint at little bits and talk about little different things. To do with the thing, to do with the big topics, um, like the New World Order, like the Illuminati, that are like NASA, I guess, that are prescient when it comes to um, conspiracy theorists and their theories, and then so that when we it all accumulates, you know, you, little sands of knowledge, and then suddenly you're an hourglass full, uh, so that when we do come to the New World Order as its own subject, we can go, oh, like this, like that time we talked about this. So we don't have to cover it in such depth because as you can probably tell by the Wikipedia page alone, it's a big one. Briefly, the New World Order is a conspiracy theory which hypothesizes a secretly emerging totalitarian world government. Easy as that. Right. Oh, I hate it when it doesn't remember where you were. Right. Where were we? Bad, uh, da, 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 da. Something about conspiracy theories. Facilities. Ah, here we go. Art and aesthetics. New world order. Right, so let's add it to our um to our Canva. I hope for, oh, is that up? Yes, it is. Right, let's see if we've got any new world order elements in Canva. Um I'm gonna type in new world order to see if it comes up. But uh, if not, we, we I'm just, I'm sure there's some kind of symbol that maybe we could use uh, to represent them. 
It's coming up with Flags of Australia. So that's interesting. Oh, I like that one. Oh. Why are you not working? There we go. Right. Um, as, as you probably know by now, I, I don't pay for Canva. Um, so there's going to be a watermark, but I don't mind. I like the spikes coming out of that. Um, there are others, but maybe we'll save those for later as we discuss why connections might be seen um, and whether or not they are, you know, We need to figure it out, don't we? So let's figure it out. Right. In March 2019, the airport unveiled an animated talking gargoyle in the middle of one of the concourses. The gargoyle interacts with passengers and jokes about the supposed conspiracies connected to the airport. Now, this feels like um, a conspiracy on a conspiracy, like a false flag. Maybe not a false flag, but a. Um, Conspiracyception. Like they're pointing you towards this, but um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this will be. I don't know. Blue Mustang, an El Paso born artist, Louis Jimenez, was one of the earliest public art commissions for Denver International Airport in 1993. The 32 foot tall, 9.8 meter sculpture is a bright blue cast fiberglass sculpture of a horse with glowing red eyes located between the inbound and outbound lanes of Peña Boulevard. Jimenez was killed in 2006 at the age of 65 whilst creating the sculpture when a part of it fell on him and severed an artery in his leg. At the time of his death, Jimenez was, had completed painting the head of the Mustang. Blue Mustang was completed by others and unveiled at the airport on February 11, 2008. The statue has been subject of considerable controversy and has acquired the nickname Blucifer for its demonic appearance. The sculpture has been defended and disparaged by many people. Just, just let that sink in. Photo of Blue Mustang at uh, sculpture at Denver International Airport. It's a very that's a terrible. It's even called Blucifer sculpture. Um, so let's let me just freeze and then I'll um, search for it and find. Yeah, it's coming up with um, Blue Mustangs. Who would have thought? Let's type in Denver. That's the Wikipedia one. Let's have a look for really big photos so you can get some nice detail on it. That's a nice big photo. Accept all. Look at this bad boy. That's crazy. Um, how do I do that? That way. That's, look at that. That looks like a horse sculpture that could kill a man. I'm not going to... At at correct? I I think I don't um, look at the veins on that boy. Whoa! Nearly ten meters tall. Who? Why would people? I don't. Let's come back to that. Oh, you got a sneak peek. None of you deserve a sneak peek, but you got a sneak peek. Um, oops. Right, where were we? Art and aesthetics, blue Mustang. We'll have a look at that in a bit. Ground transportation. And then it just goes on to other stuff. Accidents and incidents. Interesting, but not necessarily anything to do with 
a conspiracy, although there are a number of airplane uh, and transport conspiracies that we may get into. Um, right, let's have a look at the, the, the references. So the New World, so it starts at 38. <sighs> okay. Um, some of these I've already got up, so we'll come back to this. Let's have a read about Blue Mustang, and then we'll do some news articles and see. Um, yeah. Blue Mustang, or Mustang, and known to locals by the nickname Blucifer, is a cast fiberglass sculpture of a Mustang located at Denver International Airport. Coloured bright, bright blue with illuminated glowing red eyes, it is a notable for both striking appearance and for having killed its sculpture, Louis Jimenez, when a section of it fell on him at his studio. Does he have a picture of Louis? That's a shame. Oh, wow. He really had a lot of... What? Wow, this guy lived a life. Okay, so as a child, his left eye was shot by a BB gun. He got a glass eye eventually. As a young adult teaching art at junior high, he was temporarily paralyzed from the chest down in a car accident. In his later years, he had a heart attack and required hand surgery. Incredible. Let's see if we can find a picture of the guy. Ah, okay. Okay. So it looks like he likes big blue horses. That makes a little bit more sense. If you're going to hire someone to do a sculpture and, you know, they do big blue horses, he's probably going to do a big blue horse, isn't he? Um, he looks like a badass and he looks like the kind of guy that, you know, would fight a fiberglass horse. I don't know where I'm going with that. Okay. Um, back to Blue Mustang. I can't believe how big it is. It's huge. 9,000 pounds. 4 point, well, 4,100 kilograms. I just, I can't put that into... Commissioned in 1992 for $300,000 and was not erected at DIA until 2008. It was paid for by the developers who, since 1988, have, required to con have been required to contribute. Ah, okay, this makes way more sense. Um, compared to the previous uh, uh, Wikipedia that we, were, that we were reading. So since 1988, have been required to contribute 1% of the cost of major capital projects to public art in the city. So that's the reason they were spending so much on art. And the reason there are so many art pieces within the... It's just because the, the airport in of itself costs so much to make that a... Um, a 10 metre blue Mustang was a given. It was going to happen no matter what. Uh, the original proposal had been for a sculpture of a buffalo stampede, but was deemed inappropriate since buffalo had been hunted to near extinction in the West. Mm. So Jimenez proposed a Mustang, a symbol of the West and an early method of long-distance travel. I wonder why he's... I wonder how he ended that. Jimenez completed five similar horse sculptures at a smaller scale. Four held in private collections, but the eight-foot Mesteno which was completed in 1997 and served as a one-quarter model of the 32-foot sculpture has been part of the... U okay, so that makes more sense. Maybe that one we saw was the one of the, you know, previous ones. After missed deadlines, the city sued him and as for 165000 it had paid him up front for his $300,000 dollar commission. Jimenez countersued. Mediation decided that Jimenez would complete the sculpture. Okay, cool. One of the sculpture's three sections came loose from a hoist, pinning him against a steel support beam and severing an archery in his leg. He bled to death on his studio floor before being declared dead on arrival at the nearest hospital. So, I don't read much into most of the conspiracies. I have a little bit of background knowledge on most of them. I made that dead on arrival joke at the beginning of the show without realising what had happened. So just bear that in mind. So this is an eight foot mystique. No, that's a different one, isn't it? So that is a, that's a literally a one quarter model. The other one, so I reckon he was doing Mustangs well before this. 
Um, so Jimenez had already declared the painting of the head complete before his death. After his death, friends, family and contemplated whether to leave a sculpture incomplete, to destroy it or to complete it. To honour his legacy, though perhaps to avoid having to pay uh, the city of Denver for failure to deliver on contract. Although he had died, so I don't know if... Surely that's a... Can you get out of stuff like that? <laughs> like, he's dead. He's probably not going to finish it. They elected to complete the sculpture, which was completed with the help of the artist's staff, family, and professional lowrider race car painters. What? Camilo Nunes and Richard Levato. Upon completion, the sculpture was sent to California for assembly and then shipped to Denver. Blue Mustang was in... Why would you... Why, why would you send it to California? I... Anyway, unveiled in 2008. Like a number of other, other animal sculptures by Jimenez, the statue has glowing eyes, which are a tribute to his father, who ran a neon shop sign Jimenez worked in as a youth in El Paso. The eyes are illuminated by LED floodlights, so that makes sense. Uh, so it's a steel armature. The statue is the largest to Jimenez's career. That would make sense. Some early sketches had the sculptures uh, as yellow or pink. The choice of blue may have been being inspired by Jimenez's own horse, Blackjack, a blue roan al Poso. You can get blue horses? That, that's not really... It's not really blue, is it? The paintwork is a tribute to the lowrider culture Jimenez grew up with in El Paso. How? In 2016, April Fool's joke, D.I. held a Facebook poll to choose a new colour for the horse. Uh, uh, the sculpture was bolted onto a concrete base at the hill of a median in Pena Boulevard, while the original designs involved a more ornate base and a pull-off where viewers could get much closer to the sculpture. The pull-off idea was nixed after 9-11 over security concerns. The... Oh, I see. So people... Okay. Pull-off made me think, like, you could pull something off the statue, but it's not. It's just a, a space where you could pull over and have a look at the statue. There had also been a push to get the sculpture inside the terminal, but space was needed for transportation security administration. Visitors cannot get close to the sculpture. I wonder why. I wonder if it houses something inside it. It's public reaction. The sculpture has been widely disparaged and praised. Disparaged has got two, two references. Praised only one. Locals have taken to call him the statue Blucifer, though the artist estate dislikes the de demonic associations. The Facebook group made in 2009 garnered national attention for requesting that the sculpture be removed, but the creator of the page eventually decided she wanted the statue to stay. The statue has also been noted for its prominent veins, scrotum, and anus, as well as its overall phallic quality. So this uh, video on YouTube is going to get <laughs> flag. The statue has also been noted for a prominent veins. Oh, that's the same sentence, Alex. Why are you reading it again? In September 2019, the piece was vandalized with orange graffiti on its hooves. Uh, so valuation, the commission for 300,000. The city ended up paying 650,000 for the sculpture. A 2007 appraisal performed just prior to the statue's completion valued the work at 2 million. And the city has ensured the piece at this value and if it ever went up for sale i would imagine it would probably go for more it's it's pretty cool which you know i think plays a major a major part of of um valuing art it's it's massive yeah and you're getting quite a lot of stuff for your money and also it killed its maker and it's got a beautiful story behind it but it's also you know Lucifer. So I, I don't know. Right. So let me have a drink and then we're going to go through some news articles. I, hmm, we'll see. I don't know. This might be a shorter episode than normal just because it is a very specific conspiracy, isn't it? But we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So this is a history channel. So you know you can trust the history. Let me on Ancient Aliens. I know you know the people who produce it. This is just for the history channel. Let me go on Ancient Aliens. I'll say whatever you want me to say. Um, right, everyone else can come back in the room. So, the secret of Denver Airport and other weird conspiracy theories. I don't care about the other weird conspiracy theories. Um, 
Let's zoom in a bit. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. This month is the anniversary of the moon landing. Or is it? Despite widespread debunkings by ex aspirated ex experts, many still think Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin never actually stepped on the lunar surface, and that the whole thing was a vast PR stunt to beat the Soviets in the Cold War space race. But while everyone's heard of the moon landing conspiracy theory, some others are less well known, despite becoming part of contemporary folk folklore. The secret of Denver Airport. Built in the mid-90s, we know this. Denver International Airport has inspired its own sinister mythology. Conspiracy theorists point to an array of evidence suggesting the airport is actually one of the headquarters of the secret rulers of the world. Take the sheer scale of the airport. We talked about that, didn't we? The fact that it's big is going to have its own... You're going to get eyes looking at. You know, people are going to be looking at. Does it really need to be twice the size of Manhattan? Could this be because the airport is actually a mere front for a secret underground bunker complex ready to be used as a concentration camp for US citizens when the one world government takes over? Right, we need to go to um, bunker. I think we need to add that. Uh, underground bunker. That's a cool picture. <laughs> oh, sorry, you can't see it. There we go. It's not very stylized like I usually do it, but I uh, know that's just cool. Stick that there in the corner. Very nice. Thank you very much. Then there's the ominous art dotted around the place. One is the Blue Mustang, a genuinely sinister sculpture of a blue horse with blazing red eyes. If hell had horses. Well, yes. Death on a, pe death on a pale horse. Death on a pale. They'd look like this. Damningly, the Blue Mas Mustang, or Blucifer, as some call it, also killed its own creator. Artist Louis Jimenez bled to death when a section of the sculpture fell and impaled him in his studio. Like in a scene from The Omen, and now this demonic structure stands vigil at Denver Airport. Why? Conspiracy theorists point to an array of evidence suggesting the airport is actually one of the headquarters of the secret rulers of the world. So, this is this this seems to be the main conspiracy. The main conspiracy is it's really big, so it's probably hiding something underneath it. And why are there murals inside the airport depicting terrifying soldiers with gas masks, along with in images of suspiciously cheery looking children from around the globe? Debunkers claim the murals are simply works of protest art heralding a utopian future. But conspiracy theorists say it's a visual representation of the imminent one world government. And then there's the stone slab in the airport engraved with Masonic symbol. Along with the words, New World Airport Commission. More proof the New World Order is at work. Ooh, oh, how exciting. How very exciting. Okie dokie. Um, oh, I'll go through the rest of the conspiracies that they have on this list. Paul is dead. It's a famous conspiracy. I might do a um. I wouldn't. I wouldn't just do a focus conspiracy 101 just on Paul is dead because I think it's a bit lacking of things to talk about. Um, maybe in the future. I don't know. But there may be a musicians one where we can do two or three different musicians that have conspiracy theories around them, and um. So the Paul, Paul is dead one, most people have heard of it. It's the fact, the fact, the idea that Paul McCartney died early on and he was replaced by someone who looked like him, but not, not so close that people couldn't tell. And the Beatles as a group and maybe the three other, you know, real Beatles put in clues and hints to suggest that Paul McCartney was not actually Paul McCartney. The Lost Cosmonauts. This is a really interesting one that I do want to cover. It's basically the idea that um, Russia sent up other astronauts or cosmonauts into space that we don't know about. Um, very interesting. The deliberate sinking of the Titanic, that is a really interesting one. Um, it basically says that uh, the Titanic and her sister ship, which is the Olympic, what does it say? 
does it say? Oh, no, this is different. Okay, so the deliberate sinking of the Titanic. I, I heard Titanic and Conspiracy Theory, and I thought it was the one where they they swapped the ships. This is not. This is the one where they say that he deliberately sank it. Again, um, probably because the Olympic was massively, um, massively damaged, and the costs to repair it um, would have been too much and may have bankrupt the company. Uh, we'll read about them and do that at some other point. There you go. You can read it if you want to. You can go on the website. It's very nice. It's called history.co.uk. So, moving on. More news articles. Again, suspicious. Suspicious. This is from The Independent this time. The darkest conspiracy theories about Denver's bizarre airport. That has four there, but it's... Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Interesting. This has got some nice pictures. This is, oh, that's way too obvious. Uh, surely, we looked at we looked at the airport layout, didn't we? And it didn't look like a swastika there, but that really does look like a swastika. It looks like one of those swastikas where the people who draw it don't really know what a swastika looks like and they draw it wrong. But maybe don't make it so it looks like that. So this was from 2017. Even before the current Denver International Airport opened in 1995, even when it was a mere blueprint, it was the subject of countless conspiracy theories. To this day, the, notor to this day, the notoriously bizarre... Ah, okay. Register for free to continue reading. I'm going to show you a little, little, uh, little trick. So, go to Archive, or Wayback Machine. So type in Wayback Machine or archive.org and then go to the Wayback Machine. This is a, a website that basically tries to scrape um, web pages and preserve them. Um, but what you can do is take the website that you cannot read, browse the history, and usually, if you're lucky, there'll be a couple. There's a recent one. We'll click on it and see if it works. Sometimes images might not link. Sometimes, oh no, other things might not link. But usually, <laughs> something simple you can do in your days off if you wish. Plus, there's no ad, which is nice. To this day, the notoriously bizarre airport is shrouded, shrouded in secrecy, riddled with weird statues and creepy art, and abounding in myths. Abounding. I like that word. There are some crazy conspiracy theories surrounding the airport's true purpose, many of which stem from the airport's confusing origins. To start with, people don't understand why Dent Airport was built in the first place, since there was a fully functioning one closer to downtown. It's eno also enormous... Excuse me. It's also enormous. The airport is twice the size of Manhattan. They like that fact, don't they? They like that fact. And was $2 billion over budget. The airport also features a plethora. Oh, this is so independent, isn't it? Of creepy art and strange decor that people don't understand. It's famous for its terrifying 30 foot, 32 foot. Has that grown? 32 foot tall statue of a giant horse with fiery glowing eyes. Even creepier, the red eyed statue called Blue Mustang killed its sculpture, Louis Jimenez. It fell on him and severed an archery. Inside the airport, there are also murals of a devil jumping out of a suitcase, as well as a statue of Anubis, the ancient Egyptian god of death. Right, there's two things we haven't heard yet. Uh, that's not how you spell Anubis. There we go. So let's add you. So maybe, maybe it was the Egyptians. Uh, some of the most contro controversial murals have now been removed, but they featured a character that resembled a Nazi officer in a gas mask children in front of a burning building, and kids gathered around a knife. Some have interpreted one mural as America submitting to Germany, 
as it depicts a Boy Scout handing a boy in Bavarian clothing its, his weapons. Many people believe that this much money and space must be hiding something sketchy. Here are some of the craziest conspiracy theories surrounding the airport. It was built by Nazi group the New World Order. Okay, so they're now they're okay, so they're they're linking the New World Order to Nazis. Um, has been done before. Most would go the other completely the other end of of what you would of the Nazi um, Nazi spectrum, and say that it was a Jewish conspiracy, which gets a bit tricky because there there's a lot of history when it comes to pointing the finger at people who are Jews, ethnically and religiously, um, which I'm sure we'll get into deeper when we when we do that. Doing one episode just on that might be interesting. It might be a more serious episode, but that might be a, a good future episode. So, all right, uh, that's more to add. I don't... Will Camber have a Nazi? Okay, it does. Literally has a picture of Hitler. That's him organizing the the Denver airport. He's that's him organizing it. He's getting this guy. Who I don't recognize. Don't recognize. Um, yeah, that's what that is, and that's the truth. Some conspiracies conspiracists point to the fact the airport was built by a mysterious group. A dedication marker and plaques around the airport maintain that it was funded by the New World Airport Commission. But a, that's just a bad, that's bad words to use, even if you're not. But that's what made me think... It, it's making people look. But a little digging shows that no such group exists, which is why people believe it is actually the Nazi group, the New World Order. It's the Illuminati's headquarters. Okay, so we're jumping around everywhere. Other theory, theories suggest that since the plaques depict the Masonic Square and compass, compass, compass symbol, it must be an Illuminati group. Uh, that is um, also used by the Freemasons, which I would, I would imagine are more... There we go. So that's the, the Freemasons, pretty much. The compass, the set square, and the G, um, which doesn't stand for God, but it does mean like the... Basically, it stands for God. Um, must be the Illuminati group. Adding fuel to the fire is the date of the airport's dedication, March 19th, 1994. If you add those numbers together, 1 plus 9 plus 1 plus 9 plus 9 plus 4, you get 33. 33 degrees in the highest level one can achieve in Freemasonry, and which represents perfection. Theories posit that the two billion the airport went over budget went into building the Illuminati's HQ beneath the airport. Two million is definitely two billion even is definitely enough. Two million would probably be enough, wouldn't it? Just put some bunkers underground. I guess they want those like they want it to be comfy. They want the leather chairs, and the lighting has to be perfect. If you're going to be in the Illuminati. You want good lighting. Alleged, allegedly, I don't like that word, when the airport was first built, it somehow screwed up the first five buildings. Instead of removing them, they're said to have been buried, which sounds like a pretty swank undercut underground lair. It's hiding fallout shelters. So this is a more this is a nicer one. This is a nicer conspiracy, this one. Other conspiracists claim that the airport is hiding underground tunnels and secret bunkers meant to house world leaders in case of some sort of disaster or apocalypse. Apparently, when the airport was first built, it housed a newfangled automated baggage system in its bowels, but the system never worked. Despite its astronomic cost and the amount of space it takes up, it was never fixed, so many believe it is a way to cover up the existence of multiple tunnels leading to an underground bunker. Okay, so now we've got two different things the hint at something happening underground so one the, some reason they messed up and some things were underground or, or below a level that they were appro was appropriate and then the the baggage system just that's a weird one it re <laughs> its runways resemble a swastika when viewed from above yeah okay 
interesting. We did look at the pictures, but let's look at them again. Not that one. Where were you? There you are. So we've got Blue Mustang. Blue Mustang. And then this. I don't know what this is. It looks like seating, but it also looks like a gun. Here's the Masonic Illuminati. Denver International Airport. Dedication capstone. Okay, using a capstone is super Freemasonry. Or idolizing a capstone, engraving a capstone. Using a capstone is just like building, isn't it? Wellington E. Webb, Mayor, Governor, Secretary of Transport, Roy R. Roma, Frederico Pina. The Times capsule beneath this stone contains messages and memor memorabilia to the peoples of Colorado in 2094. Dedication capstone laid, maybe, by the most worship the most worshipful Prince Hall Grand Lodge. Yeah, okay. So Grand Master. And the most were so these okay, so the dedication capstone was laid by so it was Freemasons have a long tradition of doing engraving and um being good at building. So the fact that they went to the Freemasons to get a big stone and maybe something beneath it makes sense. The New World Airport Commission I can't really read it. Uh open image and new tab. There we go. The New World Airport Commission contributors, Martin something, Eric. So something aeronautic, Ventress, and some metals. So you've got two grandmasters um, of different lodges. One for Colorado, and one for what's that? Colorado. Um, and then there's the the G, but doesn't stand for God, and the compass and the set square. That was a good article. That was better than history, wasn't it? Right. Next, let's have a look. <laughs> but sometimes when you see a picture, it makes you think. Yes, lasers. You may or may not have heard. Den's got some secrets. Oh, this is from Fly. Oh, this is from Fly Denver. Let's do this one last. Um, okay, so this one is about the talking gargoyles. The talking gargoyles shock travelers at Denver's International Airport. Boop. Denver International Airport, already known for being home to some wild conspiracy theories, just got a little bit weirder. A new talking gargoyle commissioned for the airport's 24th birthday turns heads in a promotional video posted Thursday. Wait, you've never seen a talking gargoyle before, the gargoyle asked the surprise patron. Welcome to the Illuminati headquarters, I mean Denver International Airport. With a talking gargoyle, Denver Airport seems to be leaning into its reputation as keeper of conspiracy theories. You name a wild rumour, someone has attached it to the airport. From evidence of aliens to, yes, the Illuminati. Okay, that link there is a guide to the, to the various conspiracy theories, so we'll read that after. We decided a few years ago that rather than fight all of this and try to convince everybody that nothing's really going, try to convince everybody. Well, that was your first mistake. Let's have some fun with it. Heath Montgomery. That sounds... That's either a made-up name or someone from the Illuminati. When the airport's then the airport senior public information officer told the Denver Post in 2016. We're going to read that afterwards, uh, the explanation of various myths. Let's see what it has to say. It's a little too close for comfort, lady. Oh, oh damn. Um, 
What, you've never seen a talking gargoyle before? Welcome to Illuminati headquarters. I mean, Denver International Airport. <laughs> this is awesome. Hello. Do I know you? Are you hungry? Oh, I'm starving. You got anything for me? Those flowers look delicious. Oh, my God. Oh, it's because of the conspiracy. Look at me, I'm a little know-it-all. Will you get back over here? I got a question about this conspiracy. Did you have to buy an extra seat for your hat, sir? Sir, are you stealing a desk? Sir, you have resting, confused face. Do you have a favorite animal or pet? A caterpillar. A caterpillar? Wouldn't you rather have a gargoyle? No! Yes! You know, you can actually put the phone down and have a conversation with me. But no, I'm a millennial. I've got to post it. I've got to snap face it and Twitter book it. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, I've got a stain that needs some polishing. Can I borrow your cleaning cart? Oh, no. Yes. I need your help. Guess what my favorite food is. What? No, I want you to guess. Um, uh, cumin? Cumin. Yes, I love cumin. <gasps> I said cumin. Oh, I thought you said cumin. I'm a real big spice guy. <laughs> Furry hat guy, I can't believe you are wearing one of my friends. Hey, this isn't your friend. It used to be until you put it on your head, man. <laughs> How old are you? Well, 243 years old now. I look good for my age, don't I? Yeah, work out. All the time. You should see my squats. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a sweet talker. Will you take me back home with you? Let's go. I have some space in my backpack. Actually, I think you have too much baggage for me. <laughs> Fair enough. That was, that was awesome. Gotta hand it to him. I don't know what comedian, who, who the comedian was behind the voice, but that was very good. Um, leaning into it, but maybe a little bit too much. Okay, so we've looked at the gargoyle. Uh, that's a good point. Let's put a gargoyle on our little, oops. Perfect, because that oh, doesn't look very good when you put it on there. There we go, that's better. Uh, that just looks awful, doesn't it? But that's kind of, you know, that's what I'm going for. Uh, let's put him, can I flip him? Yep, boop. We'll stick you there. Make you a little bit. I feel like Anubis should be, you know, at least the same size as the gargoyle. Okie dokie, that would be a good reminder. So. Where are we going for? Okay, so this is a different one. This is from Undercover Colorado. So, you know, hmm. might have some biases. Oh God, that looks horrific. Let's open that in a new tab. How DIA's murals feed conspiracy theorists. This is from 2021. So this isn't going away, is it? Um, yeah, it's not going away. Among some of the strangest art that populates the grounds of Terminal Denver International Airport are two murals that were commissioned and installed when the airport was being built in 1995 by local artist Leo Tanguma. Note, the controversial second mural below, Children of the World of Dream... Children of the World Dream of Peace has been moved to storage for airport renovation. It's unknown at what time it will return in the future, though it is expected to. Two murals are in the east and west baggage claims, outside of the Great Hall. Each mural is split into two pieces separated by doorways. Together they tell a variety of stories for travellers to interpret while waiting for their bags. That makes sense. That's nice. Something, you know, whilst you're bored at an airport to sort of ponder over. So this is in peace and harmony um, with nature on West Terminal. The first mural is called that which is said to symbolize the environmental destruction versus environmental healing, is located in the West. The second mural, Children of the World Dream of Peace, depicts war versus peace theme. It was previously located in the East Side baggage claim. Not only are these pieces quite weird, especially to be, to be used in airport art, but both have unsuspectingly fueled speculation that Denver International Airport is part of a larger conspiracy centered around a group known as the New World Order. Uh, I don't really, uh, don't need the background information. Ooh. 
Da, 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 da. We've read all this before. That's the one we're looking at. That's probably a nicer picture. Let's open that one. I want to see the what the what. This is weird. Weird. Right, let's have a look at these. Okay, that's a terrible picture. This one's slightly better. Okay, this one's nice. So this is the one that's still there. Um, okay, you got whales. You got bits of Colorado. You got the animals. You got all the different types of people, including Scottish people. Uh, and okay, I think this is meant to be people all from all around the world, not not just from Colorado. Okay, that's that's not that. Uh, it's a bit weird, and I can see why they might. Um, yeah. You can you can see why people would wonder why, can't you? But compared to this, I, it, you got a little poor little dying baby. You got children. You got some weird gas mat. Why would you do that? Okay, and it's got some it's got some writing on that you can't see in the corner. But there's a little note in the corner down here, where, behind my head. Uh, and on that note, this is what it says. I was once a little child who longed for other worlds, but I am no more a child, for I have known fear. I have learned to hate. How tragic, then, is youth which lives with enemies, with gallows ropes, yet I still believe I only sleep today, but I'll wake up a child again and start to laugh and play. Ugh. And then there's a second part to it, which is very similar to the first mural, isn't it, in terms of the, all the children. They're breaking the sword? And they're wrapping the swords in flags? And then it's got loads of people... India and Pakistan have got together now. They're happy. Fair enough. South Africa's stealing all the, all the weapons. UK and Ireland are stealing all the weapons. I love how the Irish person's ginger. Of course they are. Some doves. This is just... You know when something's trying to be not racist? There you go, Palestinian, Israel, Russia and America. But then it just sort of, it veers over into sort of caricature and, um, and stereotype. Ah, it's... Okay, so we've got another article from The Telegraph. Let's see if our little trick works um, with the Wayback Machine. Was it this one? Cool. Okay, it's loading. It just takes a while. There we go. The airport that launched a thousand conspiracy theories. No airport in the world has been the subject of such persistent conspiracy theories at Denver International, which celebrates its 20th birthday today. This is from 2015. Soon after the first flight, United Service to Kansas, United Service to Kansas City left the tarmac. The murmurings began. They initially focused on the view of the airport from above. Hmm. See. Other articles said that even before it had opened. Why, as some, does it so uncannily resemble a swastika? Surely this is evidence of some evil right-wing plot, or just a coincidence. Many airports, particularly those with four or more runways, just look like this from above. Well, not really. JFK looks like this. Okay. 
Last day. This is a problem with Wayback Machine when the uh, when the photos don't work. All right, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't the designers have chosen a less controversial layout? It's not as if they are struggling for room. It's practically surrounded by the desert, the sort of desert you'd expect to see UFOs hovering in. This is the first time we've properly, properly heard about UFOs. So let's stick a little UFO in. Ah, oh, let's put it in there. Just... Beautiful. Couldn't the designers have shown... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's more. Conspiracy theorists soon turned their attention to the airport's interior. Over the years, Denver International Airport has made strides to fill its terminal building and the surrounding area with artwork. Forced to. You have to remember that. Okay. Um, hmm, it's all the stuff. Funny how that one, that picture works. Hmm. Hmm. So what is the true purpose of Denver International Airport, if not to usher in travellers to the state of Colorado? Some conspiracy theorists would claim it is a giant military base, or even a concentration camp, just waiting to be used to assist the enslavement of the American people. They point to the high cost of the airport, $4.8 billion. That's nearly $2 billion over budget. Never mind that Hong Kong International Airport, completed just three years later, cost $20 billion. Or that Dubai International Airport earmarked $82 billion for expansion back in 2007. Okay, so the cost isn't necessarily a, a bad thing. They point to the amount of land used, more than any other US airport. But King Fahd International Airport, which I think is in Saudi Arabia? Maybe? Let's just, let's just double check that. Tell me where you are. Yeah, Saudi Arabia. Okay, cool. There we go. Saudi Arabia. There's also vague references to a vast underground facility that may or may not connect to other deep subterranean military bunkers throughout the country. According to the website vigilantecitizen.com. Gotta go on there, haven't we? We gotta go on there. What happened there? It did not like that website. Okay. Uh, it's just an advert. Uh, I guess that site doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Analysis of the data available makes me reach at least one conclusion. This gigantic structure will eventually become more than a regular commercial airport. It has the capacity to handle a huge amount of people and vehicles, leading observers to think that the structure might be used as a military base, and others even add that in the future be used as a civilian concentration camp in the near future. Scary? No. So what does the airport say? Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. They say it's not a swastika. Uh, okay. Right, let me get rid of some stuff, and then we will look at Right, we've got a couple more to look at. Let's have a look at the definitive guide to Denver International Airport's biggest conspiracy theories. A fake skull on display in the Conspiracy Theories Uncovered Gallery at Denver International Airport. Okay, so... Ha 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 ha. Yep, a gargoyle, but they did it on purpose. Secret societies. We've been to that one, the Freemasons. Uh, artistic clues to the apocalypse. Yep. Underground bunkers and aliens. The theory. Hidden beneath the airport's underground baggage transport tunnels is a secret bunker or series of bunkers designed to house billionaires and global, poli global political elite in the event of an apocalypse. Lizard people, aka reptoids, and or evidence of aliens are also thought to be lurking down there. That seems like a bit of a stretch. So, the history. Contractors who originally worked on the airport, which went over budget and opened 16 months behind schedule, reportedly saw evidence of bunker entrances and unexplained tunnels. A multi-million dollar automated baggage system failed to work as designed, fueling doubts about the intent and scale of the construction. An alien drawing has appeared on the walls, and blurry footage of lizard people has appeared on conspiracy websites. 
Okay. Nazi runways, remote locations. Conclusion. Oh, okay, so there was only a few. There really wasn't many. Fair enough. Right. Let's see what Denver International Airport has to say about itself. You may or may not have heard, Den's got some secrets. Since the airport's opened in 1995, there have been many endless rumours and theories people say our underground tunnels lead to secret meeting facilities for the world's elite. Our blue horse is thought to be cursed. Some people we are connected to, the New World Order, and the Freemasons. Some people even say that we are home to a colony of lizard people. I feel like they're, they're bringing that on themselves. The full scope of Den's wildest rumours. Conspiracy 1. The airport was built by the New World Order. Naturally, people think that this because of our dedication marker and plaques around the airport claim it was funded by the New World Airport Commission. Never heard of them? Don't feel left out. It seems no one has. After some digging, it was discovered that no such group exists. Not now, not when the airport was built, not ever. So rather than writing it off as nothing, people have jumped to the conclusion that it's actually a group. What? So they're actually... <laughs> this is from Fly Denver. This is the... Even they don't know where the New World or Airport Commission comes from. That's messed up, right? Surely. Conspiracy 2. The airport contains the Illuminati headquarters. Remember those plaques we just talked about? Well, there's one placed over a time capsule. It also has a Masonic Square, a compass symbol, and an inscription that gives the time capsule contents to the people of Colorado in 2094. Additionally, the airport building costs were more than expensive than thought. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. The airport artwork contains clue to the apocalypse. You've seen them. You've given them many confused looks. Wondered why, how, what, really? Okay, Conspiracy 4. Speaking of the apocalypse, we're ready for it. In addition to the Illuminati HQ, it was rumoured that several underground baggage tunnels just waiting to house the world's elite. Again, lizards, aka reptoids, they... Uh, evidence of aliens? Mm, I like that. <laughs> That's really good. I should have used that as the, um, as the first picture, shouldn't I? That's a good one. So what's to come? Are we expanding the bunkers, ramping the list? So they used these pictures and linked to denfiles.com, which I don't think exists anymore, but I'll just try, try it. Yeah, so it just, it, it literally comes to this page. Um, and so when they were doing more construction, they basically put up these signs, just leaning into it, being a bit silly. There you go. Coming soon. A secret portal to the underworld. Uh, streamlined security. Or C. Another misunderstood mural. What are we doing? Adding amazing new restaurants and bars. Building an Illuminati headquarters. Or remodeling the lizard people's lair. So they had... A <laughs> what are we creating? I love that cat. That's a great cat. More space for interesting artwork. A better airport experience. Zombie cat lairs. Okay, so if you're going to set up a website to talk about the conspiracies that your organization has, surely you would go into a little bit more detail rather than just list the conspiracies and especially admit that they have no idea who these people are either. I just don't know what I don't know what to say. I don't know where to go with that. I really I I'm I'm kind of stumped a little bit. Uh oh okay uh, so yeah I'm stumped a little bit so let's um let's go to our today's sponsor which is probably a bit late cuz it's about halfway through. Uh today's sponsor is North Norfolk Railway. Um North Norfolk Railway, formed to build a line between the two towns and its name.
Watch this video, it's quite nice. Yeah, I'm going to move that just in case it's copyright. Okay, so let's... Um... You're going to stop? Let's go back to to this one and let's um, bring back our Canva. So, like I said at the top of the show, the fact that it's the biggest, the fact that it's new, it's going to have people talking about it no matter what. Then you put in weird artwork that's just a bit odd. Then you make the layout of the of the runways look like a swastika. You have hidden like all of these, you can see why the conspiracy exists. Whether or not it's an actual true conspiracy and there is something being covered up. I don't uh, I, I'm I'm starting to get off the fence into the no field. But that weird there's some weirdness there with the I feel like we can delete we can delete we can get rid of the Nazis. The underground bunkers, there's probably space underground used unused rooms and stuff, doubt it. That doesn't feel like it. Anubis, the Egyptians had nothing to do with it. That gargoyle was a great joke. New World Order, no. But this it feels like that. Like there are some, the people who built it have some kind of weird connection. And the Freemasons, most likely the Freemasons, not the Illuminati or the New World Order, have some kind of connection with the Denver airport. And uh, what that connection is and why, I have no idea. Maybe it's just to siphon off that 1% into weird sculptures and art so that they can give their friends money. Who knows? I don't know. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. As always. <laughs> conspiracies can be a little bit heavy. This one wasn't. This one was quite... This one was a joy. Uh, very weird. But we've definitely reached the limit of what I can learn today. My head is just... It's very odd. This is a really odd one. Um... But I always like to end on something a little bit lighthearted. And I think I might have flipped this round a little bit. Where, where, and you, you might have noticed it earlier. Um, where the conspiracy is lighthearted. And then the, the weird little Wikipedia thing is less so. So this is exploding head syndrome. And this is a, this is an odd one. Exploding head syndrome, EHS, is an abnormal sensory perception during sleep in which a person experiences unreal noises that are loud and sh of short duration when falling asleep or waking up. The noise may be frightening, typically occurs only occasionally, and is not serious health concern. People may also experience a flash of light. Pain is typically absent. Despite the name, the affected head does not actually explode. <sighs> That's good. Apparently 10% of people have it. I have never experienced this. But I thought it was very, very odd. Um, yeah, there have been no sufficient studies to make conclusive statements about how common or who is most affected. One study found that 14% of sample of undergrads reported at least one episode over the course of their lives, with higher rates than those who have sleep paralysis. I don't have sleep paralysis either. But... Sleep is one of those things that's always a bit interesting. Everybody has something, don't they? Um, a quirk, uh, if you will, about sleep. I, when I was a quick, when I was a kid, I had something called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. I think that's what it's called. I should have done that one, really, shouldn't I? No. I only had it briefly. Also known as Todd syndrome is a neuropsychological condition that causes distortion of perception. People may experience distortions in visual perception of objects such as appearing smaller or larger or appearing closer or farther away. So what I would have, and I used to get really bad headaches and so maybe that's linked, 
when I was um, falling asleep, I would feel, and not necessarily not necessarily see, but I would feel as if I was really, really small. Or I would feel like I was really, really big. And that sounds really silly. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a, a visual distortion. Dis, um, distor, distortion. Uh, and obviously, uh, very similar <laughs> to exploding head syndrome, uh, apparently, even though I'd never heard of this one before. But it may... It, you you know sometimes when you're doing something and then suddenly you're like oh yeah i remember that it also reminded me of sometimes you know when you like jolt jolt awake and i remembered reading something about that might have been when when humans lived in trees and uh when we used to fall out of trees we'd need to grab onto something so we have our we have a response where if we think we're going to fall we sort of like try and grab and, and go all stiff and stuff so Anyway, a bit lighthearted because um, I know what's going to haunt your sleep tonight. The Demon Horse Blucifer. Ah, <sighs> okay. That was, that was a fun episode. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, check me out on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, come join me on Twitch. We do this every Saturday at about 7 o'clock usually. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to breathe.